Good morning, Husker fans. Welcome back to the Husker Big Red YouTube channel. I'm Chris Peterson, and joining me as always is Danny Gillette, and we're back for another episode of our podcast here on Wednesday. We're going to talk about a few things happening on the recruiting trail. We'll talk about who potentially could be the next uh, commit to join the 2025 class for the Huskers. We're going to talk about some interesting things happening with running back recruiting and also uh, Cortez Mills. So um, before we get to that, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button, um, hit the like button, get into the comment section, and also check out HuskerBigRed.com for all of our uh, written content on the Huskers, Nebraska football recruiting, basketball, and everything else having to do with the Corn Huskers. Um, but first, uh, Danny, how you doing this morning, man? The Celtics, uh, NBA champs, I about said national champs, but NBA finals champions for you. So congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, I'm getting ready to go to the parade on Friday. It's going to be a fun one. And uh, I'm going to have to pick out my usual parade spot in order to uh, view the Celtics parade. But um no, it's crazy that people have parade spots here in Boston, but it's 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 going to be a fun day. I'm glad they finally got it done. Um, it's been 16 years since you know the last one, so it's been a good it's been a good 24 hours. It's been a good it's been a good time, and I'm excited to go celebrate with everybody in Boston. And um, yeah, I'll, pro I'll probably see a lot of uh, drunk people and um, EMTs as they're carrying them out on the stretchers, but that will not be me. I will be I will keep the husk or, uh, this podcast in mind as I celebrate on Friday, and I'm sure Chris would miss me if I ever left. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that Chris you don't get over there. Like, yeah, sure, that sounds all good, Danny. Yep, exactly. Make sure you're not getting too crazy over celebrating. I saw people dancing in the streets and stuff. So oh, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was pretty cool to well, see. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad it's not Thursday when it's going to be 101. That was my biggest concern. Like today in in. Uh, Massachusetts, it's like 96. Thursday is 101. Friday is going to be 80 and maybe a little bit cloudy, so that'll be nice. That'll be a fun time for Boston, and uh, hopefully we'll have some championships to celebrate in Nebraska at some point right. in the future. That would be nice. But uh, at any rate, I mean, looking at this uh, recruiting class, um, you know, we got – um, you know, we've got a bunch of good news, you know, recently with the Huskers in the 2025 class. Um, you know, TJ Latif, I guess I should mention, is another guy taking part in the Elite 11 last night. Um, but – basically kind of looking forward after some of the you know recent commitments and some of the movements that's just kind of one thing i was thinking about is who could be you know the next person to join you know the huskers 2025 class we have a bunch of you know possibilities michael terry dawson Merritt, you know christian jones chase lofton i mean there's a bunch of guys who have been you know brian tapu um we got malcolm simpson on sunday was the was the latest commitment um so kind of an interesting topic i thought to broach yeah. um you know with some of the expert projections some of the recent visits so um now that we've had a chance to kind of think about this, Danny, who are some of your guys kind of on your radar to be the next commitment? And who do you think that it will be? Who do you think will be the next 2025 commitment for the Huskers? Brian Tapu, because he's a type of player that, and I'm not saying this to, you know, kind of, you know, kind of negate his skill or say negatively about him, but he's one of, he's one of the lower star prospects that we're going after. And so I think, uh, when you look at, you know, the other schools that have interest in him, like, for example, Oregon State, I think that we have a good chance of landing him. And um, I don't think he'll take as long to make a decision as some of the others. Like like we were just talking about Christian Jones on Monday. He could push his decision into the fall, and he wants to take a visit to Wisconsin and things like that. So I think, um, you know, based on the crystal ball, predictions and the predictions in general I think Brian Tapu is going to be the next one and um, you know six foot eight more of a raw type of player but with this coaching staff and the job that Donovan Rayola has shown that he could do in developing linemen I, I would really like that and you know and we talked about this before and you probably know this Chris as a former offensive lineman you know a three-star offensive lineman you know can still go to the NFL I mean in my opinion star rankings for offensive linemen aren't necessarily as important as say you know you know a three-star wide receiver they don't tell the whole story star rankings do when it comes to offensive linemen so I'm really excited about potentially landing him and I think he's going to be the next one because I think the others have some decisions that they have to make and they may drag it out yeah, I can't disagree with that. Brian Tapu's, you know, been getting some uh, expert projections. I think he got one from Steve Wiltfong and Sean Callahan this week. So those are two pretty important ones as far as, you know, that goes. 
Um, but yeah, really, this is a guy I really like has a lot of uh, potential, I think, for the future to be, you know, potentially starting right tackle, um, you know, six, eight or six, seven. There's been, you know, a couple of reported lengths there, but around 300 pounds, um, you know, a Polynesian guy. I think he feels a strong connection with Donovan Rayola and they've been billing that or building, excuse me, that Polynesian um, kind of connection with, you know, Dylan Riola and some other, you know, some of the other commitments over the past couple of years. So um, I, I definitely agree with that. I know he's taking a visit to Oregon State this weekend. Um, so unless they can wow him, I want to say that he'll be a, a Nebraska football commitment by next week. I feel like that's the timeline. He's kind of talked about that. So um, wants to take that final trip out to Oregon State, but I could definitely see him being in by next week. Um you know, Dawson Merritt, though, is another guy that would be on my radar. I mean, he's a guy who hasn't really had a timeline. So it, it could be today. It could be next week. It could be next month. You know, we just re don't really know with him. Um, I do feel like the Huskers have some momentum. Uh, maybe they can capitalize on that. So he's another guy. I, you know, wouldn't shock me if a commitment happened, but wouldn't shock me if a commitment happened to Alabama either. So I feel like it's really that's really, truly a 50 50 kind of commitment. And maybe uh, maybe the Huskers try to get him to extend it a little bit, get him for that cook out in July and then kind of close the deal like they did with Grant Bricks last year in the 2024 class, um, you know, because that was another recruitment. They were battling Alabama, Oklahoma and some other schools for him. Um, and uh, another guy, you know, Chase Lofton, I know he said that he's going to decide soon after this last visit. I know he was at Texas A&M last weekend. He's going to be in Lincoln this weekend. I know there's a lot of uh, buzz about Texas A&M right now, and rightfully so. I mean, Mike Elko is a great coach. They have a great program. They're in the SEC. I'm sure they have NAL offers and yada, yada, yada. But Matt Rule is, you know, proven to be very difficult to beat out for in-state recruits. And I feel like that they're going to drum up a lot of buzz for Chase Lofton this weekend. I feel like they, you know, it would have been nice to have, you know, Jones and Lofton in the same weekend, but I almost feel like it worked out better because this weekend they can really make Chase Lofton the, the star and make him kind of the, the number one guy and, and try to close down that commitment. Um, I know that Texas A&M is saying, hey, we can, this is how we're going to use you and we're going to play you early and da, 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 but he can still play early at Nebraska and, and Thomas Fedoni is going to be walking out the door. So there's going to be plenty of opportunity for Chase Lofton, in my opinion, to play early with Carter Nelson. And man, could you imagine that lineup, that two tight end set with two six six guys who can both, I think, block. And obviously, look, they're both maybe more on the pass catching side, but, um, you know, no block, no rock is, is the saying that they like to say, you know, in, in college football. So I feel like they, they would both work out just fine, especially with some of the other tight ends in the room. So even though I'm going to say Brian Tapu, I'm going to you know keep my eye on uh, Chase Lofton and also uh, Dawson Merritt as well as potential commitments, uh, commitment candidates, I'll say, in the near future for the Huskers. And it's interesting. Christian Ellsworth is a offensive analyst for Texas A&M, and he used to be a uh, analyst for Nebraska. So Ellsworth is kind of being a little bit of a thorn in the side for the Huskers right now at, over at Texas A&M. But that's not the only thorn in the side that Nebraska used to have, who's now at Texas A&M. But anyway, um, so Ellsworth, Ellsworth is, you know, just an individual that I'd watch in terms of, you know, trying to pry some Nebraska players out of state into the state of Texas, because, you know, he does have that Nebraska tie. Uh, he does have you know the familiarity with the state, so I'm not saying he's gonna do he, he's gonna dominate Nebraska recruiting and there's reason to panic, but it is just an interesting subplot to kind of remember here. Yeah, it, it is an interesting uh, subplot, and then uh, with running back recruiting, that's a good uh, kind of transition because there's a lot of subplots going on right now with running back recruiting. I want to start with. Um, a new offer, a new 2025 offer going out to Gabe Irvin's brother, Ethan Irvin, on Tuesday. And this is really interesting. He's 6'1", 180 pounds or so, not ranked in the 24-7 composite rankings, just committed to Florida Atlantic. But he plays at that major powerhouse, Buford. And he's only, I think he only has like two or 300 career rushing yards. Uh, but... You know, he's going to be a senior this year. So, I mean, if he gets more opportunities this year, you could see something where, you know, his recruitment starts to take off a little bit more. Utah is the only other power four offer for um, Ethan Irvin right now. Um, Nebraska is the other. He's committed to Florida Atlantic, you know, Charlotte, East Carolina, UAB, Marshall, Western Michigan, a bunch of those kind of group of five programs have offered. But just a really interesting kind of take and maybe – Maybe some insurance. I'm not sure if they're going to push to get three running backs, but uh, you know that people are going to, you know, other schools are going to come trying to flip Jamarian Parker, the talented running back out of uh, St. Louis that commi committed to Nebraska earlier this month. So maybe it's some insurance to say, hey, like, 
you know, we're going to have a backup plan in case, you know, uh, someone steals him or tries to steal him like happened with Kiwan Lacey a year ago, or maybe Nebraska just wants a third running back. I know there was talk of uh, Mackie Nelson as a third running back in, in 2025, but according to Sean Callahan, who posted this on the Husker online message boards earlier this week, Nebraska's trying to get Mickey, Mackie Nelson as a 2024 recruit. So that kind of changes that dynamic a lot. He's going to be taking a midweek official visit this week. He's got two crystal balls. So it seems like, you know, there's some momentum. I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but uh, that that definitely would make up a little bit for missing on, uh, you know, Kiwan Lacey. I'm not saying that that's a one-to-one -one comparison, but that would at least get another 2024 running back in the room. And it seems like that's what they've wanted to do because the Huskers did offer a Juco running back as well earlier this month. So definitely some buzz to try to add a, a 2024 or push to add a 2024 running back. And I don't know, what do you think about that whole development with, with Mackie Nelson? I'm not sure how that would possibly work. I mean, all of this recruiting, recruiting profiles say 2025, but um, I, gen, I don't think Sean Callahan would have put that out there if that wasn't true. So at any rate, what are, what are your thoughts on Mackie Nelson potentially joining as a 2024 commitment, not 2025? If I was him, I would have joined us in 2025 because I think there would have been a little bit more room. Quite honestly, I'm just thinking right now, we have Dante Dowdell, right? We have Ramir Johnson. We have uh, Quentin Ives. We have uh, Gabe Irvin. Um, we have, like, the room is very crowded right now. So that's very kind of interesting to me. And granted, we had a ton of depth at the beginning of the season last year. And then, unfortunately, and I'm kind of only chuckling because it was just a series of bad luck. Many of our running backs were injured by week three. So that depth can go quickly. But at the same time, it is interesting. I don't know if, you know, I would have, you know, if I was Nelson, I don't know what his what his factors were based on his decision, but I would have stayed in 2025. And, you know, it's interesting that they're recruiting so many running backs because, you know, you're you're thinking, where are you going to put all these and what if they commit and this, that, and the other thing. But I think, and this is just me speculating, that, you know, the coaching staff learned after Kawan Lacey uh, decommitted and they were kind of stuck in that kind of we need a running back now type of thing. And I think they learned, um, you know, that – they need to have more backup options. And I think, you know, even though we have Parker, teams are going to come after him, like you mentioned. And I think it's good to have a plan B so that they don't fall into the same trap like they did with the Kawan Lacey decommit. Yeah, that's kind of my read on it too. Um, but, I mean, he is definitely – he's committed to FAU. So, I mean, I don't feel like they'd make that offer if they weren't serious in some ways. And in terms of Mackie Nelson, I almost feel like maybe that makes it – I don't know, a little better for his career path. I mean, he's obviously not going to con compete for playing time this year in my, you know, unless there really is like a, a lot of injuries this year, or maybe he's a lot better than I think he is. Um, but, you know, E.J. Barthel does have a long, you know, he's from Connecticut, um, Nelson. So there's a long history there. Um, so I feel like that's part of it is, is kind of E.J. Barthel pushing for him and just really, you know, liking him as a player. And uh, I just like it. I, I, I would like it if he added um, – you know, added to the class as a 2024 or added to, was added to the team as a 2024 prospect because um, they don't have another 2024 running back, really. I mean, Dante Dowdell can kind of step in and, and be that guy, but he's only has, you know, three years of eligibility left. So they could redshirt Nelson this year, kind of develop him and just add some depth more, you know, for the future. I'm assuming this would be another, you know, walk on NIL type deal like, uh, you know, David uh, Hofkin is another guy who's um, taking a visit this week. And um, I should say there's a kind of a, been a mix up there where there was talk before he was going to be an offensive tackle. You remember, I liked him as a defensive lineman and Nebraska is now going to be using him as a defensive lineman. Um, so I, that's just interesting to me, but um, a couple of 2024 late additions in uh, David Hofkin and potentially, you know, Mackie Nelson, which just interesting with uh, all this talk about roster size and da, 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 but Nebraska is still kind of pushing forward. I'm, I like both of these additions if they're able to work them out for 2024. But yeah, really interesting to see, you know, Gabe Irvin's younger brother, Ethan Irvin. It'll be interesting to see if he gets more, uh, more run this year at uh, Buford to see how that kind of uh, impacts his recruitment. So um, one last thing I wanted to cover uh, Cortez Mills is a guy that, you know, I've been all over. I've loved this kid. Um, 
So, you know, I, I there was a, a Twitter account, and I can't remember it last uh, off the top of my head. I posted about it on HuskerBigRed.com, so you can check out the article there. But um, at any rate, there's talk that, you know, Cortez Mills will be, you know, a Midwestern commitment. That's basically, you know, what this uh, Twitter account posted. It has quite a few followers, but it's kind of one of those, uh, you know, it's kind of working with, uh, you know, high school prospects and others. So you don't really know exactly how to trust the information. But Cortez Mills did cancel his official visit to Miami. And that's kind of what this uh, this Twitter account or X account or whatever you want to say was talking about that he wouldn't commit to a, a school in Florida or South Carolina, which is, you know, kind of pointing to Clemson, which also hosted him for an official visit recently. So um, he's been to Florida for an official visit, Oklahoma, Clemson and Nebraska. So those are the four official visits Cortez Mills has made. Um, he's not going to take an official visit to Miami, which I mean, he is from that area. So I mean, he probably doesn't really need to. But it does seem like there's been a bit of a shakeup. Um, so if he does go to the Midwest, I mean, you'd have to say Oklahoma or, or Nebraska would be the two teams. He was there for the spring game, which I thought was a smart move by the Nebraska coaching staff to, you know, just get him a chance to see like what this offense could look like. Um, you know, the, the, like Ja'Cory Barney getting a chance to make some plays early. So I don't know if to me, you know, even if that report or whatever is true about Cortez Mills staying in the Midwest. It feels like Oklahoma would be the pick. I mean, he just visited there. It feels like the Sooners have some momentum. Uh, but like I wrote on HuskerBigRed.com, if this is a if this is a Midwest recruitment, if this is a Nebraska Oklahoma battle, you can't count out Matt Rule in any recruitment. And uh, we've seen that. You never know what he's got going on behind the scenes. I mean, we've had recruitments where you know it seemed like Nebraska was out of it, and then all of a sudden, you know, Matt Rule's got you know a Nebraska a kid committing to Nebraska. So um, he can pull a Ryola. rabbit. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dylan Raiola is a great example. Malachi Coleman, uh, Carter Nelson. I mean, there's been a lot of them. Matt Rule can pull a rabbit out of the hat. Maybe he can do it again with Cortez Mills. But what do you think about, I guess, this this shakeup, this reported shakeup, the canceled visit to Miami, and what it all means for Nebraska's chances with uh, the top 100 wideout? I'm honestly shocked that he's potentially leaving the state of Florida because I thought Miami would be on him hard. I, I, I really did. And Miami definitely has a talented, like, their wide receiver room is absolutely loaded. But, I mean, at the same time, I'm very surprised he's leaving the state of Florida, you know, reportedly lead, uh, leaving the state of Florida. Um, Oklahoma is tough just because, you know, they they've they have consistently had strong offenses, so it's not going to be an easy recruitment. And for what it's worth, Nebraska is also has a lot of wide receivers, so that could work against us as well. But. I, I like, you know, this this latest report. Again, I just question the validity of it because, like you said, you're you're never too sure with these accounts, you know, you know and what their basis of information is. But it's certainly something to keep an eye, keep an eye on. I'm not going to get too excited about him potentially coming to Nebraska because, again, I kind of need to see a little bit more uh, solid reporting, if you know what I mean. But I do think – if this report is even somewhat true, that this bodes well for Nebraska. Again, I'm just shocked that he's, you know, that the state of Florida doesn't have him locked down somehow because he is a stud. He is an absolute stud, and he would start day one for this program. Um, so the account, just to give everybody a chance, it's called Polk Way um, on X, and it's a platform. This is what they call themselves to expose um, talent in your neighborhood, um, bringing the best in entertainment and athletics for Polk County. Um, but they do have 19,000 followers. Um, it does seem like they at least have, you know, relationships with some of these players. Um, so at any rate, that's where the information's coming from. Um, but basically, I mean, to kind of verify, oops, having some microphone uh, bumps there. Um, but uh, the only thing that kind of made it seem more legitimate is that, you know, Cortez Mills did cancel his Miami visit right around the yeah. same time, which gives credence to the idea that he won't you know, be joining a program in Florida. The Gators were the other one. Miami was the other kind of a real threat there. So um, at any rate, just, you know, an interesting uh, thing to keep in mind with Cortez Mills. And if he does end up going to a Midwest program, maybe it is Nebraska. I know we've got, you know, Michael Terry's out there as a five-star, you know, potential recruit, but, you know, he's got Oregon, Texas, and Texas A&M. And Steve Wiltfong had an update where he said it was uh, Texas and Texas A&M battling for him. Nebraska wasn't mentioned, but I don't know if that's, you know, it just seemed like seemed like a weird report. Maybe it was an oversight mm. on his part, but I definitely, I definitely believe Nebraska is still in the mix. I mean, I think I Nebraska is battling for him. I think just to say it's solely a Texas and Texas A and M battle is is not accurate on Wilfong's part. But I mean, he is the recruiting expert. But still, like, 
there's definitely smoke with Nebraska there, I think, even if it's only a little bit. I, you know, again, to say it's a two-horse race, I don't buy that because Nebraska's going to push for him even if they may be on the outside looking, and they'd be stupid not to. And so far they've shown, as evidenced by the 37 quarterbacks they've offered and the 65 running backs, that they're not going to you know, pass on talent. So I, I kind of don't necessarily I, I agree with that report, but you never know. I, you know, I wonder if maybe, you know, it's part of the, it was part of the Wilt Fong, you know, whip around or whatever. And I mean, that thing is gets so in depth at times. So, I mean, this, it was near the end. And I wonder if it was just like, you know, a thought like, Hey, Texas A&M. And those were the two schools that hosted him most recently. So right. it's not like, you know, it was a separate article where he talked about, you know, Texas and Texas A&M. He also didn't even include Oregon, which also hosted him recently in that little, you know, snippet or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I'm not putting too much, um, you know, giving that too much weight, as you said, but you know, it wouldn't shock me, I guess, if, if A&M and Texas, you know, were maybe at the, in the lead right now, but I definitely think Nebraska is still in the mix with Michael Terry, um, Dawson Merritt's another one, like we said, Cortez Mills, but definitely um, they've got some backup plans at wide receivers if these don't work out. Um, but just some interesting things happening with Nebraska football recruiting. We've got a bunch of official visitors coming this weekend. So, you know, definitely uh, check out HuskerBigRed.com. Uh, we'll have a lot of information about that. Um, we'll probably try to put out another video, um, you know, this weekend before, uh, you know, the official visits happen with, you know, Chase Lofton and all that. So um, we'll have some more content there. Um, again, like I said, you guys, uh, please check out uh, HuskerBigRed.com. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button to the Husker Big Red YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our other um, updates. But uh, yeah, lots of things happening. And uh, mm. it's been a fun time to be a Nebraska football fan. I think we'll see a lot of fireworks over the next month. That's yeah. my uh, prediction. Mm. So, uh, so check us out. Uh, check out the website. And as always, uh, go Big Red. Go Big Red.